Moscow airports are reopened after a drone attack that Russia says came from Ukraine and it grounded planes earlier today. Russia says the drones were intercepted above Moscow. Ukraine has not commented. CBS News foreign correspondent MTS Tab joins us now from London. Uh, there's always something going on, and of course, everybody's going to blame each other. What can you tell us also about the, the recent increases in apparent drone strikes that are targeting Russia? And does Ukraine have enough drones and drones that could reach Moscow from the border? Omar and Marie, good to be with you. Well, the short answer is yes. Uh, Ukraine does have drones that can travel far into Russian airspace, uh, and they've been using them with pretty serious effect. In fact, uh, as we've been saying, airspace above Moscow has been closed several times in recent days, uh, closing the airport, as we were showing those pictures of, uh, as reports of these drone strikes become more and more regular. As we've been saying today alone, Russia's defense ministry says it's thwarted a Ukrainian drone attack after it downed two drones over the Moscow region. Two other drones were intercepted over the Bryansk region northeast of the Ukrainian border and early on Monday two more drones were shot down in an area to the west of the capital. Although Ukraine has not claimed responsibility for specific drone strikes, President Vladimir Zelensky has previously said that attacks on Russian territory are a quote inevitable, natural and absolutely fair process. Guys. So I got to talk to you about this video of Yevgeny Prigozhin, the leader of the Wagner mercenary group, who still seems to be sort of lurking around um, at the Russia uh, African nation summit. There were reports that he was there sort of hanging out in the hallways. And now we have this video. It appears as if he's in Africa and it almost sounds like a recruitment video. But there's some sort of skepticism surrounding it. Yeah, Amory, I mean, I think the words we can use here is shocking, surprising, <laughs> unexpected. Yeah. I mean, when we consider what happened just a few months ago with that mutiny, that kind of wasn't. The fact that Evgeny Prigozhin apparently is now out and about is pretty astonishing. Uh, you know, we see this video now uh, where he's, quote, vowing to make Africa more free and Russia, quote, an even greater or rather even greater on every continent. But again, we don't know for sure if this is Prigozhin. Now, the person who appears to be Prigozhin in the video hints at his location in this 41-second clip, which was published by several Telegram channels affiliated with the Wagner Group on Monday. Now, alongside the video address, one of the Telegram channels also posted a phone number for potential recruits. Now, as we've been saying, CBS News has not been able to verify the video's authenticity, as well as when or where it was shot. But it does need to be said that Wagner has had extensive operations in Africa for years, with the Kremlin really looking to extend Russia's influence in the region. Now, the U.S. government and human rights group have long criticized Progrosian's mercenary force of committing atrocities on the continent and of exploiting many countries' gold and diamond mines in return for military support. Whatever the case, if this is indeed Progrosian and he is indeed in Africa, it would seem Vladimir Putin may have forgiven what was described at the time as the unforgivable. Guys. And one more quick question. Tell us about the significance uh, of the BRICS summit that's happening today and a little bit about the summit and how Russia will be represented there. Yeah, all eyes on Johannesburg. Uh, this economic bloc uh, consisting of Brazil, Russia, India, China and South Africa is holding its first in-person in -person meeting since before the COVID-19 pandemic pandemic rather. Chinese President Xi Jinping, Brazilian President Luis Ignacio Lula da Silva, Indian Prime Minister Narendra Modi and South African President Cyril Ramaphosa are all there and attending in person. But as you've been saying, Omar, Russian President Vladimir Putin will not be. In fact, he will be participating via video call after his travel to the South African capital was complicated by an international criminal court arrest warrant issued for him in March over the abduction of children from from Ukraine. This is a war crime. Analysts say his no-show really speaks volumes about Russia's growing isolation and Putin's shrinking horizons since launching his unprovoked war on Ukraine nearly 18 months ago. Whatever the case, beyond the controversy surrounding Putin, the leaders of the group of nations with emerging economies will also be discussing whether to expand the BRICS union. 22 countries have applied, and if the leaders of Brazil, Russia, India, China, and South Africa agree on an expansion, it will have a major impact on the global forum and on the global economy. Omar, Amory.
I think it's so interesting because often, you know, there's questions about whether or not these international sort of criminal court uh, um, accusations or warrants, if they even make a difference when yeah. we're talking about somebody like Putin. But, you know, how awkward would that have been if he showed up in South Africa and then they had to arrest him? Yeah. I'm pretty sure they're all breathing pretty a awkward. sigh of relief. <laughs> yeah. yeah. MTS, thank you.